And now the next country that will be participating is Abdurrahim uh, Shofawak, uh, on and his chapter is Empowerment, Social Distress, uh, Distress and Co-Production of Security, a Case Study of Digital Vigilantism in Morocco. So just to briefly introduce you to Abdurrahim a bit um, before going ahead. So he's a media and communication te uh, researcher from Morocco. He holds a doctorate um, in advertising and communication and an MA in Moroccan American Studies. Uh, from Hassan University and from the University of Casablanca. And his research interest includes media discourse analysis, media policy, and digital culture in general. So, uh, Abdul Rahim, without taking more time from your, from your, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much, uh, Laura, for the efforts you've invested in making this uh, event uh, come into fruition. And of course, I would like to, to welcome the, uh, the audience. My chapter uh focuses on um a case study of uh, digital digital vigilantism in uh, uh, in morocco and through the lens of that um uh, that event uh we have the uh, the possibility to see uh, a number of uh, insights and to uh, draw them in order to, in order to understand the situation of vigilantism in the country as a whole uh, i would like to start by giving uh, a brief idea about the event itself and then uh, I will highlight some, some of its uh, insights and some of its meanings that uh, can shed light on the situation in the country. The, uh, the event uh, that my uh, chapter focuses on is, uh, I mean, as a student assaults his teacher in, in the classroom, uh, a weird event uh, at the end of the day in which, I mean, uh, a pupil punches his uh, teacher while in the classroom and the some of the other students managed to shoot the event the misconduct and the misbehavior and share that uh, online so the, this is the first instance of uh, of vigilantism that there is an offense uh, within uh, a classroom setting then one of the students managed to shoot the whole thing and shared the uh, the video online and once the uh, video reached uh, uh, the uh, uh, social media platforms, especially Facebook, which is ubiquitous in Morocco. Uh, yeah, the whole country, I mean, uh, went uh, on an uproar. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, uh, everybody started denouncing the whole uh, behavior or misbehavior rather. And then uh, the, the video went viral. It reached, uh, I mean, uh, a ne ne it went nationwide. It reached approximately all corners of the uh, country. Everybody uh, somehow at least watched or heard about the, uh, the event. Uh, even though it was, uh, I mean, uh, a Sunday, and Moroccans were uh, on that day uh, busy, maybe watching some international football match or something of that sort. Nevertheless, I mean, uh, reactions, uh, I mean, uh, happened instantly from all uh, uh, stakeholders, all the key ones, including education authorities at the national, regional and local level, uh, families, uh, social media activists, uh, I mean, uh, 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 in uh, unions, uh, teacher unions, uh, I mean, uh, all the uh, key stakeholders, politicians, MPs, ministers, even uh, key figures in uh, in the uh, secu in security departments reacted nationally, regionally, and locally. I mean, it was a real, uh, I mean, uh, event in the country. It, it that was not um, uh, expected to go unnoticed because of that act of shooting and sharing uh, online. So that's the uh, the event. Now. That event and uh, all the circumstances that took place around it can give us, I mean, an idea about at least two key uh, things in the context. The context uh, in which that event happened uh, included two key uh, features. The first one uh, is the increasing uh, digitalization uh, in Morocco, in, uh, which can tell us that more and more people are buying uh, uh, smartphones and uh, connectivity is uh, is not bad. It's good, rather, since Morocco is uh, uh, posing itself as a technology hub in uh, the MENA region, or at least in North Africa, given its geopolitical uh, or uh, uh, geographical location between Europe and uh, and Africa and the uh, the Arab world. 
So um, that's the first thing, which is the digitalization, which is uh, an ongoing process uh, increasingly in, in the country. And together with uh, digitalization comes what uh, Andreas Hepp describes as deep mediatization. So it's not just digitalization that is, I mean, uh, material, but it is also social, which is mediatization. More and more people are being accustomed uh, to the use of, uh, uh, of social media, of uh, different platforms, different devices, uh, I mean, wearable and, other, and uh, otherwise socially embedded uh, uh, devices, phones, uh, in particular in this case, uh, despite the fact that uh, social media and vigilantism uh, uh, as an effect help reduce the different aspects of exclusion that the digital age brings with it. With it. The digital age brings with it in Morocco, uh, uh, I'm talking now, a, a, a number of aspects of uh, exclusion. That is to say, a number of social groups are excluded in the digital age. Here I'm talking about the poor, the elderly, kids, um, people in the countryside, uh, etc. They are excluded, in fact. Uh, the illiterate, they are excluded. But vigilantism helps, helps counter that by uh, pushing people to be more and more included in uh, uh, public uh, debates. You see, this is, this is the first aspect. The second one is uh, in the context. The second one is the context of the Arab Spring. Since uh, Morocco belongs to the uh, Arab world, and uh, in uh, 2000 and towards the end of uh, 2010 and throughout 2011, up till today, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, developments of the Arab Spring have never ceased to exist. We frequently, up till today, I'm saying, we still see, uh, I mean, uh, street uh, uh, protests, we can see people uh, demanding different social, political, economic uh, changes. And that context, I mean, uh, uh, also helped in uh, bringing uh, vigilantism into uh, more uh, uh, vigor, to become more vigorous and more uh, visible, uh, helping people see the benefits of the digital age, uh, despite the different aspects of uh, exclusion that I uh, mentioned. Then. Uh, this is the, uh, the context. I would like just to conclude with some two or three uh, uh, points uh, that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, show how Moroccans are, have been continuously using and uh, valuing the impact of uh, vigilantism on their uh, lives, on their aspirations, on their relationship with the state. Uh, since uh, at the end of the day, I can say that that event can tell us that vigilantism can function for the three uh, uh, words that uh, I have in the title, which is whether it is empowerment or uh, trust, social uh, distrust, or a co-production of uh, security. In fact, vigilantism helps in the three regards to, uh, to uh, I mean, infuse more empowerment, uh, bottom-up uh, empowerment, uh, or what um, uh, Jorgen Habermas describes of, uh, as uh, uh, peripheral overflow. So uh, through vigilantism, we have seen considerable the um, peripheral peripheral overflow. Since the city in which that event happened is what is that, which is far away from the center. It is a periphery. Nevertheless, it, uh, uh, through vigilantism, that city managed somehow to uh, uh, to push a number of uh, policies uh, uh, related to education and security in in schools forward. So it is uh, bottom up. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, impact, uh, bottom-up empowerment. It's also an aspect of social distrust since, I mean, uh, uh, through the different cases of evidentism, and then I, I, I will uh, come back to some others uh, in, uh, in the discussion uh, today. I mean, um, citizens frequently show that there is some sort of distrust since, I mean, uh, through their vigilantism, through the different cases, the highlights, they uh, want to say that, I mean, uh, possibly they need more uh, security around, they uh, want to contribute, they want to participate, they have the capacity despite the different aspects of exclusion, nevertheless, uh, uh, the, po the politicians, the elite in, in the center, in Rabat, in uh, Casablanca, need to, uh, to trust the citizens more and uh, need to uh, seek more trust from the citizens. And so, Vigilantism is 
uh, I mean, uh, one zone which, in which we can uh, uh, discuss the uh, uh, issue of uh, social distrust. And also, it's uh, an aspect of uh, co-production, since uh, through vigilantism, through shooting uh, events uh, uh, that, are, that bring some offense, uh, and uh, sharing them online and talking about them, discussing them, uh, sharing them uh, virally through WhatsApp, through uh, mainly uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube, uh, which are very famous. The, the three platforms are very famous in the country added to Instagram. So uh, the uh, citizens want to say that we want to co-produce our own uh, security. We have the possibility to do that. But on the other hand, I don't think that the uh, security agencies are ready enough to, uh, to believe in that possibility and to uh, give uh, citizens the, the, um, uh, or the possibility to contribute to their own uh, uh, security, since this is, I, I would say, uh, I mean, a governance mechanism through which, I mean, the elites want to continue governing through, uh, I mean, holding all security possibilities in their own uh, hands. So this is a general idea about what the chapter is about, some of its insights, and I will be very happy to, uh, I mean, to discuss more or to give more ideas about uh, the event, about the, its meanings and its implications for Morocco today. And thank you very much. These are two different questions. I would like to address the first one first. Um, when it comes to the added value of the chapter, at least I can mention some three points. The first is that, um, uh, the uh, geographical location that the uh, chapter belongs to, which is the Global South. Uh, somehow, as it is put uh, uh, bluntly and uh, clearly in the introduction of the, uh, uh, of the book, uh, the, 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 uh, usually when we speak about digital vigilantism, we would uh, focus mainly on the uh, Euro-American sphere, if I uh, can describe it as such, or the, on the Global North, while the Global South needs more light, I would say. And so the chapter belongs to that effort of shedding light of uh, other zones. Uh, uh, I mean, where we can also speak about this uh, global trend of uh, holding uh, uh, digital devices and using them for the promotion of individual or community uh, demands, maybe locally, uh, regionally, or uh, nationally. So this is the first point, which is, uh, I mean, uh, an aspect of the global south. The second thing is that within that uh, large area that we describe as the Global South, uh, the, the chapter also speaks about something very specific regionally, uh, region-wise, which is the Arab Spring. No other chapter mentions that, and uh, I think this is uh, part of the added value of the uh, chapter, but it's not the only work that speaks about the, uh, Arab, uh, the Arab Spring, I mean, uh, in academia. Academically speaking, this is not the only chapter that speaks about that. However, Again, the added value of my chapter is that it speaks about the Arab Spring context, but not during the protests of the Arab Spring per se, but rather after that, and how that context of the Arab Spring has pushed or has encouraged uh, uh, common citizens to make use of the different devices in their hands. The third point is that um, uh, the focus on, uh, on Morocco as a, a country is um, has its own uh, addition to the to the book in the sense that in Morocco we are here comparing traditional media and uh, social or new media. In traditional media, we have very little uh, freedom, and so as um, I'm again quoting uh, Naomi Sakar, 2007, uh, in which uh, Naomi says that. Uh, 2007 now, of course, that thing has been proved more in, uh, uh, in uh, research, that the use of social media is a means for resisting the docile impact of uh, traditional media. These are big uh, claims, and I, I agree with that, that through social media and through the, the example or the sample uh, or the case that the book focuses on, we can see that, yes, uh, social media can help, can promote, can uh, empower citizens to resist the docile impact of traditional media. So I, this is the uh, added value of the book to the, uh, of the chapter to the book. Uh, the second point, which is <coughs> how has vigilantism uh, developed uh, since the, uh, the writing of the book, which is something like two or three years uh, uh, from now, especially that the book, uh, or at least the chapter, 
was wholly conceptualized before the pandemic. And so that's a key development that needs to be taken into account if, uh, I mean, uh, we would like to speak about, about vigilantism in Morocco in some future uh, uh, chapter. I mean, if I am <laughs> going to write another, abs another chapter, I will certainly take into account the impact of the uh, pandemic in which we have seen a lot of uh, other case studies, maybe similar, maybe more uh, challenging and more powerful uh, in that regard. So uh, during the, uh, the pandemic, uh, I mean, uh, um, Moroccans were asked to, yeah, and that was a campaign, stay at home. That is to say to avoid going into the street in, in order not to be contaminated or to further uh, spread the virus or contaminate uh, others. So a lot of uh, videos were, were shot and shared uh, online. And, and on the other hand, also there was a, a considerable case of uh, vigilantism that I, I may, I would like to discuss some uh, someday, uh, which is um, a policeman slaps a citizen in the streets and some other citizens were passers-by who managed to shoot that and shared the uh, video online of that uh, policeman asking some uh, common citizen about some document of why you are living home, etc. It's all related to the uh, pandemic and to the stay at home uh, campaign. Nevertheless, it uh, backlashed against that policeman and a lot of denunciation and shaming uh, took place uh, online. Uh, this is the uh, one of the key developments. The second one is uh, during the, the friction between Morocco, the Polisario, and uh, Algeria uh, recently, uh, there was um, a lot of, again, uh, fake news separating from different sides. And so uh, online, we, uh, I mean, uh, we saw a lot of uh, um, correction of uh, uh, fake news, but also a lot of doxing, uh, not only for, this, for, for justice, it's not just justice seeking efforts, but also entertainment. There was there were so many means and uh, especially against uh, fake news. Uh, and uh, a little event happened in, in Paris in which uh, there was a demonstration from Morocco and somebody attacked that uh, demonstration and the Moroccan uh, activists managed to dox that person and share information uh, about him. And uh, I mean, asked for the, uh, the French, uh, I mean, uh, justice system to, uh, I mean, to bring that person into uh, to justice. And a third, maybe last one is uh, recently, I mean, especially again during the pandemic, but this time uh, I would also like to shed light on some pro-state biased vigilantism, because during the, uh, the pandemic, especially on, um, uh, on traditional media, but also on so-called private media here, mainly uh, private uh, radio channels, uh, the, the combination of the two, I mean, traditional media, TV and radio, as a state media, and also so-called, so-described private media, uh, especially uh, radio channels, they started, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a public relations image repair campaign, pro-state, and they used a lot of vigilantism, doxing different activists, I mean, uh, um, sharing information about them, denouncing, or den uh, denouncing, uh, people who would, I mean, not respect the uh, state, uh, uh, I mean, symbols or uh, the state leaders. It, there was a lot of vigilantism, a lot, but this time pro-state. And uh, that's, uh, again, uh, to some extent, I mean, an unwanted or undesired development that is not necessarily a pro-public, uh, 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 I mean, uh, service or uh, the uh, public interest. Uh, because in the book we discuss uh, vigilantism that is mainly pro, uh, I mean, uh, public uh, interest or that would empower citizens uh, in their co-production of security. But here we are uh, also witnessing the opposite. So these are some of the developments that, of course, need uh, more uh, research if we would like, uh, again, to bring them into something uh, to be read.